brothers and my sisters Only they can understand we'll Fight this war together Together we will stand Hey everybody, it's Joe and thanks for tuning in to TVO Campfire. What this show's about is about successful veterans and they're bringing you the stories and their experiences and we hope that it can provide inspiration to each of you out there or maybe a veteran that you know to help in their life. Welcome to TVO Campfire. Today we have a guest who's really going to dazzle you because she's a United States Army veteran who's worked in the healthcare field as a program assistant for over a decade. She did that before deciding to pursue her bachelor's degree from St. Edwards in Austin, St. Edwards University. And she has a concentration in psychology, which is really exciting because she went on to pursue her master's in chaplaincy in seminary from Liberty University. Uh, she has her own business. She is a chaplain. Actually, she has a couple of businesses, which has made <laughs> her very successful. And she's going to share some of those things with you today. I'm super excited to introduce to you United States Army veteran, Tracy Galloway Galpin. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you. It's just amazing all of the things that you've been able to accomplish uh, during your career in the Army as well as after. And so we're really delighted that you're going to be sharing that with all of us here and those that are listening and watching the show. Okay. Good morning, okay. Tracy. Thanks for doing this. And uh, mm -hmm. what I like to jump into right off the bat is I want to I want to go into one kind of where you're born, where you grew up, and what what was your fun as a child that you like to get into. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, originally from Chicago, Illinois, and um, I actually uh, am a uh, sibling of a twin as well. So uh, I grew up with a, a twin sister and uh, we are identical and we just simply had fun, uh, you know, teasing uh, family members and friends and, you know, uh, we love the whole um you know, twin uh, thing uh, per se. And we, we simply, simply, uh, you know, enjoyed our time uh, growing up together as well. Um, we also, uh, though we're both twins, we are also extremely shy. So um, it was amazing how uh, after uh, growing up in Illinois, uh, we both wanted to attend college, but our parents at the time were not uh, able to uh, send us to college. Even though we had, you know, uh, good grades and everything, we both needed a, a full ride. So uh, we had a, a military uh, genuine uh, attending our uh, uh, one of our uh, class uh, things to, you know, give us other avenues of reaching our college goals and we both decided at that time that uh, well after hearing his uh, speech and uh, sharing with us how we could actually earn college monies by just joining the armed services we decided that was definitely something <laughs> that we wanted to do and um, to uh, also help alleviate our parents uh, from um, spending so much money. So that's exactly what uh, we did. I joined the United States Army and my twin sister, Stacy, she joined the Air Force, the United States Air Force. And so that's kind of how um, we began our military service. So how did you both decide to look into the military? Had you heard about it or did you have uh, the education portion through like recruiters at school? Or did you have family members that were prior service? That's a good question. So my dad, he also was prior uh, military. He um, uh, was a military veteran from the United States Navy. However, we also had uh, his input, but then we also had the input of a uh, military recruiter that was coming 
by our uh, uh, high school uh, during that time. And so we just kind of took in the information, you know, didn't seal it in stone just right off front. But then after really, really thinking about the benefits and the travel and the extra resources, we, we could not deny that, okay, this is something that we definitely, definitely should try. And so we did. I like it. And your dad was a very smart man for choosing Navy, by the way. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, my dad. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, did, did you happen to have any type of perception about the military, uh, you know, that was leaning you away from it or drawing you to it first? At first I did, you know, uh, to be honest with you, because, you, you know, you see the movies as a child, you know, um, the uh, angry drill sergeants or, um, you know, people that uh, had uh, bad experiences, uh, last but not least death, <laughs> you know, from, you know, joining some, you know, who paid the ultimate price. So those were some um, things there that really, you know, laid heavy on my heart. But Again, after talking to the recruiter and him kind of, you know, uh, uh, tearing down some of those uh, <laughs> folks, some, some of those fears, I should say, um, then that kind of uh, gave me the assurance, as well as my sister also, that it would, uh, this would be something possibly that we would uh, enjoy doing in our lives. So, and that's what we did. Yeah, to do that too. With, uh with your sister going to the Air Force and you in the Army, what was it that really enticed you to, about the, the Army side of things? <laughs> wow, okay, to be bluntly honest with you, <laughs> we were both planning to go uh, to the Air Force. However, uh, uh, you have to uh, score a certain score in order to uh, be accepted to the Air Force. And so I was to just a few points below, I think it was uh, 50 at the uh, time, you have to uh, score at least a 50. And I think I had a 48. And um, so I told her, you know, we, you know, since we've uh, been together all our lives, I said, uh, you know what? You know, this is my second, it was my second time taking the test as well. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the army. And then, um, which was really difficult because we've always been together. And so, um, but I did, and you know, she, you know, both and uh, her and I, that is, we both uh, agreed that, okay, well, you let me know how the army is and I'll let you know uh, how the Air Force was. And she actually did, she scored a 51. Uh, at the time. And so uh, after me taking the uh, test again for the second time, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go into the army. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, keep, you know, putting myself uh, through this testing. Um, I know I'm an intelligent woman. I just, uh, I'll select something that I think I'll have fun with uh, learning and then I'm going to go from there. And so we did, we, we just, uh, uh, decided that we're going to have two uh, separate journeys, and that's what we did. I bet that was kind of hard, though. Um, it was. It was. Uh huh. It was. So, where did you end up going to your basic training, and what was your MOS? Okay, perfect. Well, I went to uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, was where I did my basic training, and then. Um, my MOS was uh, 77 Lima, you know, which now I, I understand that <laughs> the, uh, that particular MOS has changed since um, my time, but uh, 77 Lima was a petroleum laboratory specialist. And so that's what I did. I was a um, person who tested fuel oils, lubricants, uh, different types of oils to make sure uh, that they were suitable to go to the prospective companies. So we do all our testing at a, a tank farm and then uh, we give the okay to uh, the different uh, companies that, okay, so this tanker here that's carrying this particular uh, batch of oil or um, uh, gasoline or JP4, yes, it is definitely suitable. 
to go to your companies. And so that's what we do. We give the okay to make sure those oils and those JP4s and motor oils were suitable to go to the prospective companies. I didn't even know that the Army had it. I wonder if they still do today. They, uh... I was thinking the same thing, you know, if they, I didn't know they had that. And um, it, that would be kind of a good skill to have. You get to uh, know about a lot of things that are going into your own vehicle uh, nowadays. And so, Absolutely. but Joe, I know you've got some more to say about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely intrigued. Like when you came in, you, you, you mentioned the low ASVAB scores that you, that you had on it. Um, so when you came in, did, did you get a choice or did they just say like, here you go, Here, here's the one thing that you, that we need you to do? <laughs> yes, I got, I've got a, a variety of choices to, I think I maybe had about seven to maybe 10 different uh, job titles to select from. And I selected the petroleum because my uh, family in California had uh, oil on their property and I decided to let me see what, what that's all about. <laughs> and um, I was co-horsed, I should say co-horsed by my mom. <laughs> she uh, was instrumental in uh, sharing with me that, you know what, that would probably be a, a good field because you could probably pursue that even after the military. And so that's why I did. <laughs> that's why I did that. That's, that's good to hear. And so mm -hmm. when you were young, did you play sports or anything growing up that, that oh my really God. helped you? <laughs> I was terrible at every sport. <laughs> Basketball, softball. Oh, my gosh. My twin sister and I both, we were the, you know how you have that uh, group of people that are the, uh, well, the group of kiddos that are the last ones to be picked <laughs> for the sport. Uh, to have a, a, a team member on your team. We were the last one. So I was, we were uh, very much not sportly inclined <laughs> to say the, the least. <laughs> gotcha. But you did play though. So you, you, you definitely learned the, the teamwork concept way early. And yes, you'd be, yes. I, it baffled me how many folks I was around in the, my early part of the service that didn't have teamwork skills. Wow. I grew up kind of eat, sleeping, and breathing sports. So to me, the oh, teamwork wow. concept, it, teamwork concept was so, so simple. Okay. To the point to where for me, boot camp was kind of a joke. Uh, uh -huh. and, but uh, while, while you were in was, you know, for some people, boot camp is such, such a, a major change in their life. And for others, it's just, eh, okay, temporary. You know, how did, how was boot camp for you? For me, um, it was not uh, too much of a major um, uh, impact for the exception of uh, learning how to actually fire a weapon. Now that was something that um, <laughs> I had to uh, uh, develop uh, the patience for, but the uh, teamwork and um, being able to work together as a team. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed um, the buddy system. Uh, I really liked that part about uh, being in the military and actually uh, being accountable, not just for myself, but for my buddy. So I really enjoyed that part about it. But yeah, um, basically uh, learning how to fire a weapon. Uh, let's see, another thing that would uh, kind of got me all up in a, a rut was, uh, I think it was map reading, <laughs> learning how to read a map. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, but after learning those, those things and after mastering the art of my breathing on firing that weapon, oh my gosh, I felt so, so gratified with uh, patriotism because you know that was something I learned. That was something that I could accredit the military for teaching me that skill as far as you know, protecting uh, my country uh, uh, with my weapon, uh, 
knowing where to go, how to get there <laughs> with my compass, you know? So those are some things. And then, like I said, that buddy system, oh my gosh, I'll never, never, that even today uh, helps me uh, even in business now, you know, being uh, careful to remember uh, my partners. I yep. think what you're sharing about patriotism is something that until you have gone in the military, you do not understand the depth of how patriotic mm -hmm. that we are. I know for me, anytime I'm at an event and we've got the Pledge of Allegiance or we've got one of the uh, branches of service music, or I mean, I just am the Star Spangled Banner, I am choking, I'm standing there choking up, wow. trying to hold back, keep my bearing, as we would say in the military, because it's just so, it's evoking such emotion like you were talking about. But I want to ask you, Tracy, when you were talking about map reading, did your land navigation, did they take you all out into the middle of nowhere and say, <laughs> okay, you know what I'm talking about, so they must have, because yes. you're laughing. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh my gosh. But once I learned, let me tell you this, Rebecca, once I learned, you know, how to uh, correctly read my compass, how to correctly read a map, it made it so much easier. So I just breezed through it when I had my um, testing time, you know, at the end of your training, you know, there's a testing time that we have to go over all those skills, what we've learned in those 14 weeks. And so, oh my gosh, I was on it. And I'm needless to say, I got a hundred on everything, push-ups, setups, <laughs> map reading, uh, you know, uh, firing my weapon and, you know, just going through the whole uh, training part. I was so grateful. That little book that we had, uh, I forget what it's called uh, now, but uh, it actually had uh, the answers to, you know, how to, you know, properly read a map, how to, you know, read that compass, how to, you know, um, you know, uh, the breathing technique with that, uh, that butt of that M16 in that cuff of your arm. So it had different things that we could uh, read at night. And that was the time that I would, um, have to be alone to just kind of get those things and kind of um, commit them to memory so that I could execute them properly. And so um, that was, um, that was magic there. That was magic. <laughs> you had mentioned like you really like to be, you know, in there with your buddies and stuff, getting and learning mm -hmm. those new people. It, do you still have people today? that you're still close with or still in contact with, maybe even work with all the way back from boot camp and, and like AIT? I, I wish I did. So I lost contact with uh, all of my um, friends from basic training. I just recently joined a basic training group on Facebook for uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina basic training. Uh, command. So I'm networked there, but my actual class, the actual uh, buddies that I had in my unit, no, I have not. <laughs> we have, you know, and that's the thing about the military, you, you go all over the world, you know, some went to Germany, some went to Korea, which I went to Korea once upon a time myself, but you lose connections in the moves from time to time. And that's exactly what happened. So you did a tour in Korea, and mm -hmm. how long were you in total, Tracy? Okay, so I was, uh, let's see, I did four years active army, and then I did uh, three and a half years in the National Guard, Texas National Guard. Where all did you actually get to live uh, throughout your time? Okay, so I went to, let's see, after basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I went to um, Fort Lee, Virginia. And from Fort Lee, Virginia, I went to Fort Hood, Texas. And from Fort Hood, Texas, I went to um, 
Korea. Uh, I was at Camp Mobile, Korea. And then from Korea, Camp Mobile, Korea, I went to, um, let's see, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. And then uh, from Fort Lewis, Washington, um, I got married. And so we went to Fitzsimmons because my husband was in the nursing program there. And so from Fitzsimmons, then we uh, went back to, well, actually, let me go back. So I got out <laughs> after Fort uh, Lewis, got married, and we went to uh, Fitzsimmons, from Fitzsimmons to uh, back to Fort Hood. And then here in Fort Hood is where we remain. It sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I enjoyed Fort Hood. Fort Hood was my best, one of my best uh, duty stations. I think uh, Camp Mobile Korea was my second best. So. Really? I, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're one of the first ones I've ever heard saying that the hood was the best at, <laughs> out of all. Because usually when I hear Army people talk about Fort Hood, it's like, oh, man, you know, the hood. Oh, no, no, no. But, uh, oh, it was, I mean, yeah, I met a lot of uh, great people here uh, in Texas. So I really, really never will forget, never will forget the friendships, you know. Uh, that well, I of had. course, if you weren't here, I wouldn't have met you. And, uh, oh. <laughs> and we have developed such a, a really tight relationship. And I absolutely love and appreciate it very very much you have been such an influence it's exciting to hear some of the things i didn't know and um, <laughs> as much as you and i talk and this is what it is about you know being around the campfire is you when you're around other veterans you get to talk about things that come out maybe you've forgotten about or Right. didn't place as much importance on it with what we're currently doing and yet what you mentioned which it seems like time and time I hear a lot of veterans don't stay in touch with people that they were stationed with, but yet those were the most yeah. in-depth relationships mm -hmm. because we had each other's backs that you can develop. So yeah. it's really interesting to hear that. And so yeah. you stayed here at Fort Hood and yeah. you mentioned that you were able to get a full ride going into the military for education. So were you able to use your GI benefits, GI Bill benefits? Yes, I was. I was able to, uh, Yeah. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize you were still talking. I do apologize. But yes, I was able to use the GI Bill. I also, uh, after coming out of the military, I was able to utilize um, uh, what's called a Volk Rehab. I think it's still called that, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I used the Volk Rehab. And then by the time I finished that, I had exhausted all of my <laughs> funds for military and I actually ended um, up using uh, government assistance to uh, assist with my master's program for chaplaincy. How long did that take you once you, um, as far as getting that, that chaplaincy? Right, so it's a, um, a three-year program. And so I think I did it in about four because, you know, working, <laughs> And going to school by this time, I'm actually with uh, three kiddos and um, divorced. Um, let's see, divorced and remarried. <laughs> and um, like I said, three kiddos, which um, is definitely a balancing act, you know, balancing school and uh, working and, you know, uh, helping those kids. And so it's just, it was a, a balancing act. So eventually I uh, finished <laughs> in four years as opposed to three. And so once you determined, hey, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and separate and I'm going to start focusing on my life outside the military. What was some of the like key factors that said, you know what, I'm, I am, I'm done. I'm ready to work on me now and what uh -huh. I'm going to do. Yes, yes. So uh, after the military, because of that patriotism that I've already uh, learned and uh, gained, I should say, uh, from being in the military, I always, uh, upon my separation, I always wanted to 
uh, be able to work for other veterans. And so that uh, started my journey at the Department of Veteran Affairs in Austin, Texas. And I worked there for um, 11 years uh, before um, uh, going full-time into my bachelor's program. And then um, decided to uh, continue uh, working on me per se. I mean, I enjoyed what I did, but as you know, um, I was working in the fuel industry, but as a program assistant, that's definitely not fuel, right? <laughs> so um, there were no jobs like I thought there would be for that particular MOS that I, uh, I uh, so uh, willingly uh, enjoyed and learned uh, how to work, but I just had to, you know, uh, go ahead and do what I could do. So I wanted to serve, I wanted to work with the veterans. And so I became a program assistant instead. <laughs> and uh, I did that for uh, almost 11 years. Wow. And So yeah. were you doing it, were you doing it because like 11 years, were, were you in it going, hey, look this right here this is this is my long term this is this is what i want to do in life i love this i love that or was it just hey this is what i have to do to get to the next step somewhere else wow no so i always saw it as a, a continuation of my service uh, to my country so uh even though i no longer had those greens on that uniform uh, being able to uh, work with other veterans, that was another way that I could continue my service. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that long term. And so henceforth, regardless whether I was uh, working as a petroleum specialist or not, I knew I wanted to serve God's people through uh, serving the military. I absolutely love that, Tracy. I think that that is so neat because this, this area being veteran and well, as you know, it, it's really important. There's so many needed things emotionally, mentally from different mm -hmm. things that have happened to many veterans. And so I think what you have chosen to do and that you've dedicated your life to do is just absolutely honorable. I'm wondering too, and maybe, both of you know this, um, and I just don't, but if you do say eight years in the army or whatever branch, and then you work for the VA, does that count towards your retirement or a federal retirement? I believe, yes, it does. So what you have to buy back <laughs> into that, uh, program to do so. And, um, Oh, which I did not do <laughs> at the time. So, um, but um, I, I prefer to just continue on the route that I'm going right now. <laughs> and when you, when you did transition out, Tracy, how was the, the help? Meaning like the support, how, how, how much help did the army actually give slash do for you? Uh, on that separation to help get you prepared for civilian life now? I, it wasn't a lot. I wish I could say, you know, I had a whole lot of help from this particular, uh, which, you know, and maybe that was because that's all that they could do. And basically, basically what they did for me was um, network with me, um, I forget the name of the organization, but there is a, a out processing uh, that you go through after, um, you know, coming up on what was called the ETS. <laughs> you uh, go through out processing, and they either uh, put you in uh, on a track to kind of you know get you enrolled in school if that's what you want to do. But there was no. Uh, at that time when I was coming out, there was no, okay, we're gonna take the skills that you do have, even though they're predominantly petroleum, we're gonna to try to see if we can put you into these particular jobs. These are the job, this is the job bank. So I wish we had that, 
when I was uh, coming out of a job bank as opposed to um, uh, just, you know, having at it, you know, going out there and looking for employment on my own, you know, so that was one of the uh, things I wish that was in place for me where, you know, I could have uh, continued my service, not just with uh, working at the Department of Veteran Affairs, which I found myself, <laughs> but also had those particular venues, government agencies to come say, hey, you know what, you know, we're, we're gonna, you know, see if we can transfer you to further your government service into these other avenues that are here in the area that are hiring. So wish we'd had that <laughs> when I got out. So I'm not sure if they have that now, but I know when I got out, it was not available. <laughs> so there's Neither. a lot of traditions in the different branches. And I remember seeing something, I never did this myself, but you can remember possibly when people would say, okay, I've got three days in a wake up or two days in a wake up. Uh -huh. And then on the wake up day, off they go. And the next thing you know, you see a pair of boots hanging over the electrical wires. Did <laughs> any of you, or either of you throw your boots over yes. the wires? Yes. Oh my gosh. I remember that. I remember that. Now, I didn't actually do that. <laughs> but I do remember, I do recall those, uh, the, that countdown, 20 days in a wake up, you know. So yes, yes. I remember that. And what I did was basically, <laughs> I sold my uniforms. <laughs> so I didn't actually throw them over the pole or my boots over the pole or anything, but I actually sold my uh, uniforms to a concession store. <laughs> that's, that's comedy. That, that's, that's comical. <laughs> it really is. It's, it amazes me, you know, hearing obviously what I went through, but like hearing what Rebecca went through, hearing what you went through and, and a lot of the other guests that come on our show, that how much of a varied experience it was on the separations, but the common denominator out of all of this, it has been, it amazes me at how many hundreds of thousands. And in some cases, like, especially on our pilot side of the house, how many millions dollars are pumped into sending our war fighters to war mm -hmm. but then on the back side of it is how much is spent on sending you back home all right all right very 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 little little is, absolutely is spent on sending you home and when i say that i mean they'll train you up to go to war but do they ever train you to go back home? Mm -mm. You know, Joe, you have Amazing. a good point. And I say that because I don't know you know, where all of the veterans are on different scales, but everything that Tracy talked about earlier about the patriotism and all of the skills that we have learned and been equipped with, I know that we carry on that to other people, including our own children. And how many of us are generationally part of the veterans line, the lineage? And yet, Joe, with what you're talking about, they should invest those things so that we continue to really advocate people enlisting. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Tracy, how long did it actually take you before, you know, once you separated, before you were like full-time hired? Wow, wow. So it took, um, I'm thinking, because it didn't uh, actually come all at once. Like I said, I had to seek out that government job. <laughs> but um, so I started out, um, I think I was working at Dairy Queen and different places because there's, you know, you just, you know, you have to go back to work, but you're, um, you don't have, uh, when you have, I should say this, when you don't have the job that you're looking for, <laughs> you know, um, most of us uh, veterans, what we'll do is we'll go ahead 
and get a job and then just go back to school, right? So um, that's exactly what I did. I just went ahead and um, got plugged in somewhere. And I think I was a Dairy Queen for a spell of a moment <laughs> until I um, got hired at the Department of Veteran Affairs. I'm just glad that you, one, you were actually to go through and say, you know what I want to do? Patro Basically, it's petroleum engineering. Really, that, from what it sounds, that's exactly what you're doing. Cool. Uh -huh. I want to go through and do petroleum engineering. When you got out, you were able to adapt to what was available to you and yes. get into it. So I'm, I'm very proud to, and, and glad to hear that for you because that petroleum engineering industry, uh, I, yeah, I may, I may know a few things about it. Just growing up, <laughs> growing up being a, a kid from Odessa. I, I, okay. Yes. I, I yes. might, I might have, I might have tasted my fair share of petroleum growing up in the world. So, <laughs> but, I feel you. but I, I, I love hearing that though, because yeah. that is a common denominator amongst successful people that we've talked to already. Mm -hmm. Is straight up, you have to adapt you have to be able and willing to change and open-minded and you have to bring in mentorship right absolutely and that that is one of the key things that that i love about what rebecca and i are doing back through our organization as well it, it's all about the personal or the professional growth sometimes it's both of our veterans and uh -huh. and you're you're a key reason why we do this show is to sit there and show people look here's how she here's how she was successful post military career so yes. tremendous 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 way of hearing that and i'm glad that it happened for you um when you transitioned out and you got into the role that you're doing now please tell us a little bit more kind of in depth through what you are doing now Great, great, great. So again, so um, I was, um, are you, can you still hear me? Oh, okay, so my camera just stopped, okay. So um, what happened, I, um, I was working at the Department of Veteran Affairs and then there was a uh, chaplain visiting our um, clinic one day just to, you know, uh, talk to the uh, workers to see how things were going and um, to uh, find out if there was anything that he could do, anything that he could uh, pray for or direct us to services. And it reminded me when I was uh, in Korea and the chaplain would come by and visit. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember saying one day uh, after a chaplain, um, where our chaplain had visited us in Korea that I would love the opportunity to uh, serve God's people in the act of becoming a chaplain and helping people uh, in that capacity. Uh, and so uh, it just triggered something when he came by. It was a different scenario, different chaplain uh, coming to uh, meet with us workers there at the Department of Veteran Affairs in Austin. I said, oh my gosh. So when he got there and he uh, got the opportunity to, talk, uh, opportunity to talk to me, that is when I asked him about, you know, becoming a chaplain what are the, what's the criteria, what's the, uh, what's the schooling like, what I need to do, because I, this is something that I really believe I would like to do also. And so um, at that time, he shared with me just how, um, it's my son, <laughs> I'm actually doing an interview, this is my son, David. <laughs> uh, he's doing a photo bar with me. <laughs> um, uh, I actually uh, got the information that I needed from him to actually pursue the uh, role of becoming a chaplain. And so that's exactly what I did. And henceforth, I became a chaplain, uh, served, uh, I guess, let's see, a little bit over 10 years now <laughs> as a chaplain and uh, continued to serve with my uh, local church here in uh, Georgetown, Texas. 
at Celebration Church and just simply love what I do as a chaplain. In your life right now, do you feel that, you know what, I've, I've made it, I'm a success? I believe so. I, I can honestly say, you know, success to me is, you know, being able to uh, do what you want, <laughs> when you want, <laughs> and uh, being able to uh, empower and influence others to uh, do the same. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. So I, I thank God for uh, this opportunity and this platform that I uh, and dare not take lightly, but uh, I, I'm, I'm thankful I'm able to do and um, uh, do what I want at this time in my life. Uh, absolutely. I was glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. With what you're doing yeah. now, do you feel that the military, the culture, uh, I'll, I'll go back a little. Do you feel that mm -hmm. the culture of the military at the time that you served, do you think it helped what you're doing now? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. One of the things that always stuck with me, and this is uh, stuck with me from my time uh, being in basic training, uh, one of the things that my drill sergeant would say to me when I was Private Galloway, he'd say to me, always forward, soldier, always forward. And that really didn't stick with me until after basic training, he said it to me again. And I asked him, I said, what, what, when, you, when you say that, what, is, what does that mean? He says, you know, whatever you go through in life, just like with this basic, you got through it, didn't, it? didn't you? You stayed forward. And he said, in life, you're gonna have to remember always forward, stay forward. You're gonna go through some things, but keep moving, keep moving, Private Galloway. And that's exactly, what I've done, I kept moving in spite of the divorce, in spite of different things that uh, has come up against me in my life. I've kept moving and that's it, yes. My military career, yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I can honestly say is on point for helping me to stay forward in life. That's awesome. I, I love to hear that stuff for sure for sure <laughs> if you were to so there with your, your son photo bombing you earlier while you were talking <laughs> it, for for those youngsters that are out there and and even yeah well we'll start with the youngsters for, for the youngsters that may see this because i know a lot of parents of of kids who are who are on active duty watch this what we're doing to try to help their kids say hey you know here's how you actually need to start preparing for your civilian life you know while you're still on active what's some of the advice that you would give now that you have that privilege of going been there done that got the t-shirt sold my boots you know <laughs> <laughs> in your yes. case sold your boots right what yes, is, so what's some of yeah. that what some of that priceless information would you love to give back to those youngsters? Yes, yes. So um, I like to give the advice of, you know, like I just mentioned about moving forward, but then also paying attention for that young soldier that is aspiring to uh, join the armed services. Pay attention uh, to what the drill sergeant is saying or whoever might be instructing them, whether they, you know, uh, in military, in the military setting or in a college setting, pay attention to what is said, you know? And, you know, cause sometimes, you know, we, we get caught up on what if, if, if the person doesn't say it just right, <laughs> or if, if, you know, uh, you know, the, the person that is stepping on your toes, you know, you, you tend not to wanna, receive the instruction. So what I what I would say, whoever gives, whoever is in the place of authority that's given instruction, pay attention to that, listen and learn, okay? And then eventually <laughs> uh, as time goes on, 
you'll be able to share those same tools that you've learned from someone to someone else you get to pass it on so that's what I like to say you get to pass it on it's interesting that you share that because when you look back from where you're at right now and you think about all the people that have made an impact on you that has shaped where you're at now or allowed you to develop things further do you think I know for me when I look back and I think about teachers or the drill instructors, the people who were what I perceived at the time most harsh on me, those are the ones that most significantly significantly influenced how positive and how, how I was able to achieve things that I don't think that I would have achieved, achieved had I not learned those things from them specifically, do you feel the same way? I do. I do. You know, sometimes we, and that's what I was sharing too about, you know, uh, you know, there's a term that says, don't shoot the messenger. Right. (laughs) So um, being able to just receive from everyone, you know, because there's always something in a message that we can utilize, you know, I like to use the term, you know, uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater <laughs> uh, term, because it's always something that you can learn, you know, from that, always something, you know, and then you want to be able to, and that's the key, being able to take that information and utilize it to better yourself, okay? That's the key, being able to take that that information, that wisdom from someone else and being able to utilize it in the time that you need to utilize it again. That, that, that's awesome right there. <laughs> that, that's gonna uh, definitely uh, be a blessing to an individual uh, in the future for future families, you know, legacy, you know, being able to take information and utilize it appropriately is going to do well. It's going to do you well, I should say. Well, you talked about mentorship while you were in the army, and now you do exactly that on the outside in addition to your chaplaincy. Talk about, if you'd like to share with us about your businesses. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I am a Mary Kay beauty consultant and a paparazzi jewelry consultant. So, oh my gosh, I love, love, love (laughs) being able to uh, see women and men transform their outer appearance, their outer appearances. So uh, whether it be through... uh, uh, skincare, because we're a skincare company with, as with Mary Kay. Yes, we do, you know, makeovers and so forth, but it's mainly a skincare company. So if they've got flaws or things that they're wanting to change because of life events and different things that our bodies go through just by being in the environment, I love, you know, being able to coach uh, a young lady or a teenager, uh, through that journey of puberty and, you know, seeing their skin transform back into the way <laughs> they were wanting it to uh, look is, is, a, is a great blessing. So I enjoy uh, helping those who are really, really seriously looking for uh, better ways to care for themselves, the outward appearance, yeah. So. Tracy, and right we- now, is there anybody that you uh, happen to volunteer with? Yes. Okay. So I do volunteer work with my church, my local church. I'm a part of Celebration Church, where my husband and I, we are both uh, known as Christian coaches. So we do uh, coach uh, individuals uh, from our church that maybe uh, need help in uh, marriage counseling or uh, stress management or um, 
just going through a tough time, you know, emotionally, especially right now during this pandemic. So we do, uh, we still do interviews now, but we mainly do our interviews through Zoom uh, because of the pandemic and having to social distance. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I do as a, a volunteer with my church. All right. And if we have veterans who are out there and they want to, they, they want to step into the world of being a chaplain, what, what's the advice that you would give to them? Wow, wow, wow. Um, <clears throat> one um, advice, uh, one main key point I would say uh, for him or her is to just, you know, make sure you pray about it, see if this is something that you want to do. <laughs> this is not just something that you do, but you definitely want to feel led to, or I should say called to uh, helping others uh, in this capacity. And then seek out chaplains in your area. So they are at your local hospitals. Uh, they are at um, uh, hospice agencies and your local church for those who have, you know, uh, uh, de denominational churches, but mainly there'll definitely be uh, some chaplains in there to uh, give you the uh, assistance as far as the uh, educational track, what you should pursue uh, in uh, becoming a chaplain. That's great. I, thanks for sharing, coming out with us today and doing this. It, it's, it, it's neat, very neat to see a different side of success on our show with what you're doing uh through the religious channel as well as your beliefs um, Thank you. that right there and that just you touched on it throughout the interview the continued service yes and Thank it's you. neat it's very neat seeing how somebody came from up north in chicago <laughs> landed in texas and was like wow beautiful uh, yeah. I'm staying, you know. <laughs> so, so that, I know that's, it's much warmer here as well. So <laughs> <laughs> much Poor warmer. Man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, but I'm so yeah. so grateful to be in this place. I tell you, it's a, a, a safe place, no doubt. Um uh, where I'm in where I am today. Oh, awesome. But uh Thank you for doing this. Very proud of you and what you're doing. And you know, I, at the, this is the point where Rebecca gets to close out the show. And and okay. anything, Tracy, that that you want to say before she closes out, please do. I mean, this this is all about you and your your time and and us highlighting you. So thank you, thank you for everything thank that you've done. Thank you. Just I thank God for uh, Rebecca giving me the opportunity to share my journey and I really do appreciate this platform to share it in as well to uh, help other veterans. What a blessing. Thank you so much, Tracy. We do appreciate you coming on and definitely talking about all of the things, the experiences, the things that have made you learn things along the way and allowed you to be equipped with things to continue to help people now and that is so much admired and so much needed and i know for us here we just thank you so much and i know those that are listening are going to value the things that you shared as well and we definitely want them to connect with you we'll put all of your connections um, attached you. with this as well thank you thank you i appreciate the service of you and your staff there as well. Thank you so much for having me again. We just love you, so thank you. <laughs> and we wanna thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of TVO Campfire. We ask that you share this with veterans that you know. We hope that you are able to get as much value and resources as we can get out to you in each episode. So share the, share the episode with your friends, your family. You don't know who's connected to who, who's going into the military and who may need help from their military service. So make sure to get this out on social media 
and everywhere else that you can think of. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. God bless you. Well, we're veterans, so we spend a lot of time in mental health. Um, <laughs> Thanks for telling me. That's part of it, right? And uh, so, and we also teach a class called, uh, now it's called Rec for Heroes. It's a guitar class at the VA, uh, Fort Worth VA. And I've been teaching now for now five years, and, and Ron has been helping me teach the disabled vets up there. And um, so I said, I got to thinking, you know what? The song is essentially three minutes with your therapist. Right? I mean, it can make you up, make you down, whatever. So I uh, wrote a little bit about it, and Ron is like, yeah, let's finish that sucker. Yeah, so we sit down and It's called finished, Three Minutes. Of, and we finished it in a thunderstorm. Yeah, that's so. right. Give me a three-minute session with my favorite Haggard song. Warm summer evening and the rumble of a storm.